Yo, 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 what's up, YouTube? It's your boy Kinetic TJ, and today we're going to be looking at a Poppy Playtime theory video. This is the official theory video. I played this game a total of 27 times since it's been out, and it just recently released uh, a few days ago. We also played a full gameplay of this game on this channel. If you have not seen that yet, make sure you go watch that now. If you don't want anything spoiled for you if you've never seen someone play this game before with that being said we're going to dive right into the theory video in this video i'm going to be showing you high definition high sound quality versions of every vhs tape i'm also going to be showing you each toy each character that is in this series as of right now from what we've been told in the uh first chapter i'm also going to dive into things that i feel about huggy wuggy which i do feel are very much true poppy um the rest of the toys all around in the staff and corporation as a whole and what their motive and process is behind these toys becoming what they are with that being said make sure you leave a like so even if you have to get off of this video you'll be able to come back to it and you subscribe to the channel for more uploads and i always post on my community now since i've unlocked the feature always wanting to know what you guys want to see next so you will also be able to interact with that so without taking up any time let's get into it if you've ever wanted to see how all of the nation's favorite toys were created playtime co is now offering factory tours at just 2.99 a person an entire hour in the most magical toy factory on earth what are you waiting for come visit the factory we can so first that was our out of game high quality high definition version of the intro vhs tape that we got that also included this letter that we can read right here so the letter reads and we all know everyone thinks the staff disappeared 10 years ago we're still here find the flower and there is blood at the bottom love but what I really also want to point out, and I'm not sure if you've seen this or not, is that disappeared is misspelled and the apostrophe in weir is misplaced. And this indicates who wrote this. Now, you may be asking who wrote it. And since this is a theory video, I'm going to go ahead and just tell you the next piece of information that we can link to who wrote it and we'll continue through the story with this in mind so just as an in-game look if you walk over here to this sign it says fostering happiness adopt an orphan today and this is what it reads the playtime co foster and adoptive care initiative strikes to create permanency in the lives of orphan children by recruiting adoptive and foster parents within our organization we encourage all playtime co-employees to take part in our mission by fostering or adopting an orphan child participating employees may be eligible for additional benefits this initiative helps children not only in the midwest region but also orphans around the world every child deserves a second chance at life now just that alone made the story much more sinister because if we look at that poster that we saw near the end of the chapter and we look at this letter that was written and presented to us at the beginning we look at it with a different mindset now disappeared is misspelled and the apostrophe in weir is misplaced indicating that they know what they want to say but they just may not have been old enough in terms of the writer of this letter to structure it the way it's supposed to be said so that's something good to keep in mind let's look a little further at a lot of other details so I decided to hop on Twitter and check out the pages of the game's development company as well as director and see if there were some nice little goodies that they had posted or teasers or stuff like that before the game gained its popularity that it has now. Sure enough, I was not disappointed. Both the development company and the director were not at all 
trying to keep it a secret that there are people inside of the toys and you can tell by certain teasers like this From there, you can see that it's the disturbing teasers that are released before the game's popularity that really show us that there are people inside of these toys somehow. And now we know how they're getting the people to put inside of these toys. It's through them wanting to work more closely with orphan outreach programs encouraging their employees to go adopt orphans so that they can bring them back to the warehouse and somehow and i'll speak on how i feel they do it but somehow get these children inside of these toys so with the development company and director both confirming that there are people in these toys whether deceased or still a host within them causing them to act strange around the factory with us knowing that there's incorrect grammar on the original letter we were sent and also that they were heavily involved with orphan exchange we can verify that there are kids inside of the toys and that makes it a lot more disturbing so now i just want to talk about how exactly i feel playtime co is getting these kids into the toys this is a small frame that's easy to miss from the demo teaser that i showed you not too long ago here you can see a human's eye in the back and let me go all across the screen a hundred percent this shows that what they're doing is very heartless and evil towards the children that they're doing it to and this is just the first thing i wanted to talk about of many i'm about to play the ending of a trailer that the developers posted on their youtube and on their twitter and in this trailer well the ending of this trailer you can see poppy's eyes moving ever so slightly as if they're fearful or as if they're just trying to look around i think the key takeaway from this entire partial theory that i'm developing is that i don't feel as if all of the toys are here to haunt you or here to try to attack you i feel like they want help though the teasers say things like you play with toys and now it's their turn i feel like majority of the toys and possibly including poppy and i'll tell you why want help but first i want to make note of the orange tape which comes after the grab pack tape and uh i think it's our third tape that we collect in the factory fourth overall so yeah i want to play this and let's listen to what this worker says about the other workers of playtime co rich where are they keeping the huggy boxes i don't know i couldn't tell you remember when maintenance left in a sweep of this place no exactly nobody in this stupid company knows what they're doing oh i swear i haven't seen a single box in its place since they started flooding the storehouse with orphanage junk right i get it it's a nice program and all on brand but, uh, 
It's just hard to be happy about it when manufacturing's on our necks about it, because we can't fight stupid hockey boxes! Rich. Oh, you're right. You're right. It's... It's for the orphans. I just wish there were less boxes. Anything less would be more habitable. Is... Is that even a word? Habitable. Briefly, I do want to make note that after watching the orange tape, it triggers for Huggy Wuggy to be spying on us through one of the conveyor areas, drop down areas like this. But as far as the Rich Avery VHS tape conversation itself, there's not too much I can pull away from it except the obvious in a sense. And that's being Playtime Co. did not value its overall employees and they were either understaffed, poorly staffed, or both. And it really took a big toll on the stress level of employees like Rick Avery. So if you have pretty much a bit of your own theory regarding what the Rick Avery tape could be hinting to us, please let me know down in the comment section. And I will make sure to put it in our next theory video as we add on more videos to come to our overall theory but we have one more vhs tape to take a look at as far as before the huggy wuggy experience or experiment 1006 i should say and i will play that now because i kind of want to tie it into my personal theory of poppy so i want you to listen closely to this tape and how the young lady sounds when she's either interviewing with Lath Pierre or whatever this may be. So, Stella, what made you want to work at the Playtime Co. Factory? Playing with toys when I was young was so magical. I could go straight from my bedroom floor to anywhere in the world. It was such a great feeling. And being able to work at a toy factory somewhere that can provide kids with that same experience? That's a pretty great feeling too. Sometimes though, I really, really wish I could go back. To being a kid, I mean. And it's weird, because adults are just kids, but older. I don't think anyone ever really feels like an adult. But your body just gets older and older, and then you die. Poof! <laughs> Human bodies just can't stay young forever. There's things though, like some trees that can stay alive even while being way older than the person. I mean, the oldest people to ever live are still younger than those. So I guess everyone is always young relative to something, right? All right, I think we're getting a little off track. See, though Laith Pierre wanted to cut her train of thought off, and redivert it back to the interview at hand. It's that type of optimism that secretly intrigues Leith Pierre, which makes me kind of believe she was going to be his next big test, which was Poppy. I do believe his first biggest experiment was the overall innovative process of getting children inside of a doll's mold or a toy's mold the greed and the desire for more grew and grew and he came up with the idea of poppy probably motivated by the young lady stella we hear in the interview tape and then i feel the greed grew more and more to a point of destruction and it became his biggest failure yet that being Huggy Wuggy. The VHS tapes are being played out of order, but it's for the sake of us gaining an understanding right now. So I'm going to play the very last VHS tape. Final log in relation. Experiment 1006. The prototype. Coordination and cooperation is evidently within his skill set, as well as the skill set of all other experiments of his type. Though still missing, today's events are no doubt in relation to him. His absence was a flaw in the scientific process, which should have under no circumstances been left unaccounted for. That's why I'm making this log, so that the same mistake won't be made twice. Any future experiments will need to be contained and disposed of in a secure location. 
I'm not worried about myself. One breakthrough and I'll be back. We must forge onwards in the name of science. Whether those who are beneath us understand it or not. End of... Now, there's no surprise that what we just heard was literally everyone in the toy factory getting attacked by Huggy Wuggy, um, the mascot version. This VHS tape does not feature Lake Pierre. Instead, it features the lead scientist of Playtime Co. So with that being said, he mentions Lake Pierre's absence. I'm assuming it's Lake Pierre because he says his absence became a flaw in the experiment. So I'm guessing that's referring to Lathe Pierre, which would bring me to my question, where is Lathe Pierre? Now, it's because of this question and this particular VHS that kind of puts a fork in my theory, because this can go several directions from here. One, Lathe Pierre could have went the Walt Disney route and decided that he may have been sick. He may have opted in to live on with his creations and to be embodied within the Huggy Wuggy mascot so that he can stay at Playtime Co. for the rest of his life after death and serve it well. Which would mean, technically, our first VHS tape that we saw, the green one, was the one recorded very last after all tapes or right before the last tape. Because if Huggy Wuggy is a security system that Lathe Pierre speaks on in the beginning, that could be he himself still living at Playtime Co. Making sure no one comes in after the fact and finds the stuff he did there. Hi, my name is Leif Pierre, and I'm the head of innovation here at the Playtime Co. Toy Factory. If you're seeing this, then you're trespassing. Yeah, we play this little tape on loop whenever we close the factory for the day. So, trespasser, just to make you aware, while we pride ourselves primarily on our high-quality toys and excellent child care, we also pride ourselves on our security. For example, this facility is full of hidden motion triggers, which, once set off, We'll turn on the factory's emergency alarms and directly contact the authorities. And that's one of the more tame aspects of our security system. No spoilers. So, you've got my warning. It's not too late to turn around. I just hope that you're certain whatever you're doing is worth it. With that particular VHS tape, I believe this was recorded shortly before Lathe Pierre's death. Because the day that Huggy Wuggy attacked the factory was the last day of any operation there. And we can tell because all of the destruction, glass breaks, toy attacks are still there till this day. Everything else is just boarded up from the inside. Which means whatever boarded up everything on the inside wanted to keep anyone from the outside coming in why is that well whoever was on that outside and would have came in to do any last minute inspections on the factory before closing it up for good and selling it would probably end up stumbling across something Lathe Pierre didn't want them to which seems to me like it could be poppy but why? The last VHS recording we could hear Lathe Pierre himself in is the Stella recording. Shortly before we are attacked by Huggy Wuggy ourselves, kept from getting to the flower, will attempt it to keep us from getting to the flower, and we find the last tape, which is destruction breaking loose from within the factory. So that makes me believe that Stella was the test subject for the Poppy creation and something went terribly wrong with the original Poppy doll 
which could be the reason why at the end of chapter one poppy is sealed away and the minute we open that door open her case she awakens why was she locked away well it's no secret that poppy is found on the other side of a door that door having a flower painted around it um and then on the other side of that door there's a house like area so i'm guessing this is an area where they test out how the toys act with real children either that or it's where the orphan children were allowed to stay but it was connected to the factory that way they can make whatever test they wanted to and because it was in Leif Pierre's mind safe because either he or whoever Huggy Wuggy could be it also could be Elliot Ludwig he could have Elliot Ludwig the owner who was long since passed away he could have went the Walt Disney route and had himself put in the creations once there was a breakthrough in the process so they were under the impression that it was going to be safe from anyone on the outside world if poppy was put into this area of the factory which like i said could be complimentary housing for the orphans or a test ink area to see the toys interact with real kids and when everything went bad he had stella put there maybe she displays some type of extreme violent power some type of extremely responsive behavior and she was able to do much more than what late pierre had imagined and they just were not prepared for that neither did they want that in the hands of children and then it draws some type of suspicion towards playtime co so with that being said that originated her being locked away which could be long will which which is long before the events of huggy wuggy gone wrong so in that vintage commercial from the beginning the original vhs tape in the end we started to see the tape glitch out and show the flower that we have to get to at the end of the chapter during that glitch out moment we saw this grim shot of what looks like a doll being a doll's head being molded now this was very disturbing not because there's a doll head being molded but because of how it was presented it was presented in a glitch out and it wasn't really presented in the core commercial which means what we're seeing is more of a die cast mold of a child indicating that there is something inside of these toys that we see now it could be stuffed it could be the children being stuffed in the toys and that would give off like a five nights at freddy series feel to it and i'm thinking there is something along the, along the lines of the the children already being put in it or them being stuffed in there somehow this placard or this plaque underneath huggy wuggy well let's take a look at it it reads playtime co has designed hundreds of distinct toys but none connected with people more than that of huggy wuggy our founder elliot ludwig aimed to create a toy which could hug you forever as is always true playtime co's four-step process to creating the most lifelike toys was a success now the placard reads four step process but there's a problem with that and you may not know it but that's what i'm here for i'm going to tell you what that problem is and how it helps us reveal the true dark and sinister motives of playtime co so in the make a friend part of the factory which oddly reminds me of the factory from child's play and there's a reason why I took note of that. In this part of the factory, there's only three known steps 
of a toy creation. Except, is it really? Let's take a look at something for a second. I want you to look at how this machine in the middle, his eyes is following us. It has eyes and they track us around the factory. Unlike these other two, there's a reason I'm pointing out this one in the middle, right? So when the toy goes into the first step, it comes out and it comes out painting the toy, right? But we can also notice that the eyes are not in its head. The toy is lifeless. And it goes into this machine which is step two. And that's the assembly. That's when it's put together. And then it goes into this last step. There's a step that we can't see. There's a step that they don't allow the public to see at Playtime Co. And that step involves a scientist, which our VHS tapes confirm there are scientists that work for this toy factory is in charge of an quote unquote, as Lath Pierre likes to say, innovative process that genetically merges a child's body with the plastic in the make of a toy. And in that middle machine, that's the process that brings the toy to life and clues all over chapter one tell us this. Let's start with Innovation Wing, shall we? Now, throughout the events of chapter one, the entire time Innovation Wing is inaccessible for us altogether. There's no way to get in here. So we also know from the do's and don'ts sign that they don't even let their employees in there. With that being said, this is where a lot of these sinister and very, very disturbing actions take place. All right, lightning bolts. Four days ago on October 12th, 2021, Poppy Playtime got released and it hit the internet by surprise. It really took the internet by surprise. And we all were invested in this story. We're all dying. <laughs> we're all waiting for the moment that Chapter 2 gets released as a DLC on Steam. So right now we have a lot of open-ended questions in our theory. And I prefer to just go with what we have so far. And as Chapter 2 and so on gets released, we add or take away from this theory video right here. And we continue to make new ones. <laughs> this was a very different video. And I'm so appreciative that you all voted for this in my community tab. Be on the lookout for my community tab. Those other two options will be coming as uploads tomorrow and then the day after that. Um, and then I'll have another poll going up asking you which of those uploads you want to see first and do the same thing there. So thank you all so much for watching this video. I'm so happy to have all of you on my channel. I do ask that you follow all of my socials. Those will be in the description as well as here on the screen. I love you all so much. Thank you for watching my video again. I'm out.